Have you heard your battery's only going to last three or four years? Then you're going to have to scrap it and send that battery to a landfill site. Or you're going to have to buy a new one. And that's a tremendous cost. It can cost more than the car when you originally bought it. I'm Dave. Welcome to Dave Takes It On. Today we're looking at batteries and seeing is that totally accurate? Well, let's have a look at what the manufacturers claim. Tesla and Elon Musk state that the battery of a Tesla car should last the life of the car. And he suggests that is about 150,000 miles for cars in the UK and Europe and about 200,000 miles on a car in the USA. They do more mileage than So the average life of a petrol or diesel car is very similar. Most people state it's reported as about 140, 150,000 miles or 14 or 15 years, whichever the sooner. Now, I myself covered more than 180,000 miles with my last car. It's a diesel car, the Citroen C4 Grand Picasso. So what we need to do is look at how people achieve those miles. So, for example, if you're a rep on the road and you're doing 40 or 50,000 miles a year, your car's regularly serviced, then your car is only going to last three, maybe four years before the engine is just totally worn out. This is a nice car. Nothing to do with EVs. If, on the other hand, you only do about, 100, about 140 miles a week, 8,000 miles a year, then your car is going to take 20 years before it reaches the 150,000 miles, 140,000 miles that it's claimed to do. So, a rep on the road might have to replace the car every uh, three or four years, simply because they've worn everything out on it, whereas someone doing eight or 8,000 miles a year might well last 14 or 15 years before everything does start running out. Now, exactly the same is true for an EV battery. If we take the UK figure, a Tesla figure, of 150,000 miles life, and the average mileage is 8,000 miles a year, it will take nearly 20 years to reach the end of the battery life. Now, the car then will differ, you see, with a petrol engine reaching a high mileage, uh, everything's wearing out. The clutch, the gearbox, the radiators, the water pumps, uh, axles, uh, these are all items that wear out and need replacing. Electric cars don't have that. The electric motor is reported as being good for 500,000 miles. So, assuming the battery does deteriorate, uh, then we need to see how it deteriorates. So as a petrol engine wears, these components just start producing less power. Your piston rings are worn, the gases sneak past the outside of it. And the battery is the same. There is no physical evidence on those, though, visibly. Internally, the battery degrades. The constant moving backward and forwards of electrons, cold weather, hot weather, etc., that does wear away the inside of the battery. You don't see it because you can't see your battery in most cases. And even if you could see the battery, it's what goes on inside. So that means that after any number of years, it will be producing less power than it did when it was brand new. This is totally normal to either petrol or diesel. But the question now is how far can it degrade before it becomes unusable? Now, with a petrol car, you can run with warm piston rings or big end bearings or valves or camshafts. Certainly you can, but at a certain point, if you keep on driving with that, you will have a catastrophic failure. The engine will be effectively destroyed. EVs are different. So whereas an ICE car will deteriorate and fail totally, an EV battery will just gradually deteriorate right the way through. Now, EVs have a battery warranty that is on average eight years, but the, vali but the mileage varies between 120,000 miles, some have 150,000 miles, a few have 200,000 miles. And the warranty covers you for whichever of those events happen first. So if you are a rep on the road with an EV, you're doing 50,000 miles a year, then your eight-year battery warranty will end when your car reaches the 150 or 200,000 miles, whichever your manufacturer offers. You will not get 
the full eight years warranty out of the battery. But you will be able to drive that car until it does 150 or 200,000. Now, warranties also specify that the battery can be used quite happily when it gets as low as 70% of the original power remaining. All warranties seem to pick the same figure. So let's have a look at what happens when your car is new. You fill it right to the top. You might be able to get, let's say in this car, 200 miles. It'll be a bit more in the winter, a bit more in the summer, a bit less in the winter. But let's say it has an average range of 200 miles. If the battery deteriorates down to 70% of the original range, it will now be capable of doing 140 miles on average. Now, if you're doing the average UK mileage of 8,000 miles in a year, your battery, even with a 70% maximum range, will still cover a week's driving for the average motorist. If you only do 8,000 miles a year, you might well reach the eight year limit on the warranty before the warranty expires on the mileage. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The average motorist keeps his car three, four, occasionally five years and does an average mileage of 8,000 miles. Now, putting the two together, if you only keep your car for four years and you do 8,000 miles a year, the battery will remain under warranty for the whole of the time the car is owned. If you sell the car after four years, the used car is likely to have 30 or 40,000 miles on it, and that's still within the 120, 150,000 mile under the warranty, and there are still four years of the warranty left to run. So if you sell your car as a used car, it will almost certainly come with the remaining warranty from the manufacturer. They keep the car for as many years as people do, which is four years, and they only drive 8,000 mile. You could find that the third owner still has a little bit of the warranty left. Maybe they've run the eight years out, but they may have some miles left. So any worries about the battery, if anything happens to the battery at all, 90% of EV owners, it will be repaired or replaced under warranty. Now, we also get constant stories. Don't use rapid chargers or ultra rapid chargers. They'll destroy your battery really quickly. Go to a Tesla supercharger all the time. You're going to destroy the battery much quicker. Well, not entirely true. In fact, not even remotely true. From the data that we're now seeing, it would suggest it's definitely not true. Now, they still advise you not to uh, always use an ultra rapid or rapid charger uh, for the lifespan of the battery. But the figures coming out now, and we've been driving cars for 10 years or more, don't seem to vary very much whether you do or you don't. In fact, one Tesla Model S, which has covered the most mileage of any uh, Tesla on the road today, has covered 400,000 miles, and that's been done almost all at um, Tesla superchargers, ultra rapids. So going back to the myths, batteries failing all the time, you need to send it down the scrapyard, going to the... Uh, we're going to the landfill site and everything else. It is all just uh, it's fear, uncertainty and doubt. We call it FUD. Uh, fear, uncertainty and doubt has been raised by the petrochemical industry and the legacy auto industry just to stop you buying EVs because they want you to buy petrol and they want you to buy a petrol car. For most people, just to stress, simple fact, if you drive 8,000 miles a year, you keep your car four or five years before trading it in, your battery will always be under warranty. If anything goes wrong, it will be repaired or replaced under warranty. So the total number of EVs requiring batteries to be replaced is actually very low. Well, it's first because there aren't that many on the road. They've only been around for 10 or 12 years, and back then it was in very small numbers. As EVs hit the road, more people will be reaching the limits, 150 or 200,000 miles, or the eight years, and will need to think about battery replacement. But once again, the media spout all these lies and misconceptions. Let me ask you, would you buy a petrol car with 200,000 miles on the clock and expect to use it for the next five years or expect any sort of warranty to remain on the, on the, from the manufacturer? If I was thinking of buying an EV, used EV, I would not personally go for one with 150 or 200,000 miles on the clock. If I was looking for an EV and they were being offered 50, 60, 70, 80,000 miles uh, or after three, four or five years, 
those would be well worth it because the battery in each of those cases would be still well within the lifespan. As for asking all the time about uh, what you're going to do when the battery fails, simple question. If anyone asks me what I'm going to do when my battery fails, I always just ask them, what are you going to do when you buy a petrol car and the motor fails? And they always go, well, no, um, no, that's, that's silly. I don't keep my cars that long. So I answer, neither do I. So although the average age of a car being scrapped is somewhere around about 14 to 16 miles, the average person in the UK uh, with an EV will never ever reach a point where it needs to be scrapped. Final observation is it is law for batteries to be recycled. The idea of any going to a landfill site is just absolute garbage. All batteries need to be recycled under the law. And that recycling claims to be able to recover 95% of the chemicals that are in the battery. So they are not scrapped, they are fully recycled. And the recycling is one of two things. The first thing they can do with them is put them into a location where the, the range is not important. And this would be something like a battery storage, grid connected battery storage. Uh, these work quite happily for year after year after year, and although the range just keeps on dropping, they just keep on working. And in most cases, these are not ever run down to 0% uh, and charged back up to 100%. They just keep working forever. Second thing is, 95% of the batteries that can't be reused, are the, all the chemicals are recycled. Can we please stop all this hype with absolutely stupid questions? They are not relevant. Well thanks very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video please click the like button and if you'd like to see more please subscribe and click the notification bell so we can notify you next time we launch a video. And a massive thank you to all our Patreon supporters. It is your support that enables us to go out and make these videos for you. So thank you very much for your contribution. I'm Dave.